Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my solar journey. So these videos are all about my experience with my solar panels and battery system. So a couple of weeks ago I released a video um, talking about what were the considerations um, for calculating the payback period on a solar uh, panel and battery system. I did watch um, a fully charged uh, episode where they were talking to Robert Llewellyn about his solar systems and uh, he said it was it's a really strange question to ask because nobody asks about what the payback period is on your car or your kitchen. But people do ask what uh, the payback period are on solar panels because they see it as an investment. Um, and in that video I talked about how complicated it is actually to calculate a payback period. Um, because there's so many unknown uh, factors that can affect it. So in this video I'm actually going to have a go at calculating mine or given an idea of what mine could be. So if you do go for a system and you employ a company to install it, they normally give, as part of their sales pitch, will give some sort of estimate based on the information that you provide to them about what size system you can have, um, what your energy uses is and what your unit rate is how much you can save. Um, so for me, that came out at a, between eight and nine years. So in this video, basically I'm going to see if that's actually realistic because as lots of things with maths, they don't actually tell you what they've included in those calculations. So I've set up a spreadsheet and I'll just show you little bits of it as we go through this video because it gets a bit complicated if I show you the whole sheet at once. So anyway, Let's start off um, with this little table of numbers. So, as I said in that video, it depends on what num how much you actually want to pay back before you considered your, um, or how much you want to effectively earn from your uh, solar panels and batteries, so how much money you've saved um, before you've considered paying off. So for me, the cost of my system in 2022 was £8,660.28. Um, that does include a £250 uh, discount I had off um, Green Glow Energy for them messing me around and the unprofessionality of one of their um, employees. So actually it was a bit more than that. Um, but I didn't pay that amount. So that's the amount I paid. Anyway, what I've got here is a table and along the top row I've got different percentages. So I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 10 percent. And down the uh, col first column I've got the number of years. So I've started at 5 years and look up to 12 years. And what this table does is effectively calculate what you would have if you put that £8,660 into a bank account and it paid this amount of interest per year uh, for this number of years. So if you put your money into a bank account now that paid 2%, um, in five years time you would have uh, uh, £9,561. If you found a bank account that paid 10% and you left it there for 12 years, after that you'd have £27,180. So the reason why I've picked these numbers is, again, you have to make a decision of what you're going to uh, choose to um, pay off. So at the moment, interest rates are rising, um, which would mean that you can get a five-year fixed rate ISA, um, currently paying around 4%. So that's why that 4% one is there. Um, if you were actually basing this on just uh, UK inflation at the moment, which is around 10%, then you would use the last column. So depends on which one you want to choose. So these are the values that you could pay back. Obviously, you could just pick the £8,660. Um, obviously, these values don't um, include tax. So if you have a number of a say, if you are putting this into a savings account, which isn't a nice, sir, each year you get um, a £1,000 allowance, I think, if you're a basic rate taxpayer. I'm not a financial expert or... Um, a financial advisor, but I think you get a thousand pounds tax allowance before you start paying tax on the money you earn from savings account. So you may have to consider that at some point as well. So that's the different amounts of money you might be wanting to pay back. So next up, we have to consider our generation. 
so there's a bit of guesswork here so there are um, pieces of software and that does estimates of what a uh, solar panel system will generate in a year depending on its orientation and its location um, and again a, a company might provide this to you so the company I used did suggest that we would generate about 4,500 uh, kilowatt hours per year and this actually seems reasonable that would roughly be 375 kilowatt hours on average per month which looking at my August values and my September values yes that's probably reasonable and you also have to look at how much you use per year so you can look at your meter readings that you've submitted to your supplier over the years if you have a smart meter it becomes really easy to know how much you use per year and I think I will use from those uh, readings over the past few years about 2500 kilowatt hours per year so therefore I'm going to export about at least uh, 2000 kilowatt hours back to the grid anyway so now I've got this table here and here I've got um, percentage use so out of that 2500 I um, use per year how much of it will be coming from energy that I generate myself because you all there will be cloudy days where you have to import from the grid or you have heavy days where you have to import from the grid so if this um, basically takes into account this whether you're planning on using 60 um, that your energy split from self-generated and import is 60 percent 70 percent 80 percent 90 percent or 100 percent as I say 100 percent isn't particularly realistic um, then this next column which says solar use per year that's basically the percentage of that 2500 so I'm probably going to be looking in the 80 to 90 percent range so if I can you um, use 80 percent um, self-generated um, electricity I'd be using 2000 um, kilowatt hours per year um, from the roof and therefore have to import about 500 kilowatt hours well, obviously what I don't use then gets exported back to the grid and then I get a seg payment for this. Um, at the moment, the average seg payment is about 5p per kilowatt hour. There are some exceptions to that. So Octopus recently have put theirs up to 15p if you are a customer for them. I'm not a customer for them, so I'm going to use the 5p. So let's say that um, we were on the 80% usage of our own self-generation. Um, that would mean that I would import export back to the grid um, 2,500 kilowatt hours at 5p that would generate 125 pounds a year if I was using 90% so I became efficient of when I was using my own power um, that seg payment would drop to 112 pounds 50 per year again assuming the 5p um, usage I then got the savings per year so this is basically taking the amount that I am self-generating and using and multiplying it by the rate so I'm currently paying just under 20p per kilowatt hour so this would be my savings based on a 20p rate the next column would be my savings if I had a 35p rate and I've picked 35p because of the government price cap um, so that's how much the uh, energy um, companies can charge you um, but it's not it's basically what an average house um, would pay um, which works out about 35p per kilowatt hour then I've got a, um, a, a row for this and I've also got a row for 48p which is what would happen if that price cap wasn't there and what some people could be paying so obviously the more that you pay for your um, rate of electricity the higher your savings will be if you are using your own self-generated power um, obviously I'm not going to take into account things that I don't know in the future like if I'm charging my electric car from home um, that causes its own problems like do I compare it to my old diesel do I compare it from power that I'll be taking from the grid uh, do I go to public charges so it makes that would make it complicated and I'm not taking into account anything here such as lifestyle changes such as using um, electric heaters instead of um, my gas boiler um, using uh, the 
uh, slow cooker instead of the gas hob using the grill instead of the uh, again the gas hob for frying um, even things like uh, boiling the kettle to fill the washing up bowl rather than just using the hot water tap so I haven't taken into account any of that and that will produce uh, even more savings so that's just to bear in mind so now we've got a series of few tables I'm going to show you so this first table would be what would happen if um, I had a 5p seg rate I was using out of that 2500 I used here I was generating 80% of it so 2000 kilowatt hours myself uh, so each year I would export back that 2500 kilowatt hours paying 5p so I'd make 25, 125 pounds per year in the next column I've got my savings so for the first two years I've I've used the 20p rate because that's what my rate is so that's £400 a year and then after that it will go up to £7 a year then th I've got a, t um, a total payback per year which would be £525 for the first two years and £825 for every year after that and then the cumulative and seeing how long it takes to cross over so in this case if I was looking just to pay back the £8,660 I originally paid it would take between 11 and 12 years assuming I don't make any changes to my lifestyle changes if I'm having to put in some sort of inflation on that then it won't pay back in that 12 year period not e um, even if I've got an interest rate of two or an inflation rate of 2% by the way, the Bank of England does try to keep inflation at 2%. So um, you can take that into account there. This next table assumes that I use 90% of my energy um, rather than um, the 80%. In which case, my seg payments drop by that £12.50 a year. But obviously, my savings go up by £50 in the first two years and £87.50 in the next year's. And therefore, I would actually, let's take that £8,660 as just the base for this. And then therefore, I'll pay off between 10 and 11 years. But again, I wouldn't pay off if I had to take into account either interest rates or inflation. Finally, I've got what would happen if I use 90% of my energy, but uh, in two years' time, um, the electricity rate was at 48p. So again... Um, I would get my uh, £112 a year in SEG payments, uh, £450 for the first two years, so I'm fixed on that um, price. But then after that, I would be making back £1,080 a year in savings, which means the payback period does be come between that eight and nine years, which would match up to my um, estimate from um, the companies that I contacted about supplying solar panels. However, it really doesn't take into account inflation or interest. So after 12 years, I could make back £1,300, which if I just go back to this original table that I showed you, would mean that that would be the equivalent of having 4% interest rates. So that's the type of thing that you have to take into account. If I put that money into a a fixed rate bond or ISA for five years and then renewed it and they still kept that interest rate of four percent then my payback period would be around the 12 year period so this would be sort of keeping track with it so after eight years of that we have eleven thousand eight hundred does that appear on this table it does and that's at eight eight to nine years as well so that eight to nine years is actually reasonably realistic for the payback um, but there are some massive assumptions there so if you want to set up your own t um, sort of um, spreadsheet like I've done it's really simple to do um, you just need the formula for calculating compound interest and just how much en uh, energy you're using find the percentage of it that you think you will be able to use from um, self-generation and then multiply that up by your the rate that you think you are going to be paying in each year and whatever you don't use calculate that as your seg payment and pick whatever you think your seg payments will come back from as i say i pick 5p so hopefully you found that useful and it wasn't too rambly um 
and um, we have some more videos coming up over the next couple of weeks so please keep an eye on that so if you can subscribe please do hit the uh, bell notification icon so you keep up to date whenever I do release a video so take care and see you again soon